Hey, everybody, it's me, Pennywise, the dancing clown. Pennywise, yes, meet everybody. Everybody, meet Pennywise. Now we're not strangers. <laughs> no, no, don't worry, guys, just, just a rubber nose. It's not Pennywise. You know me, my name is Corey, and I am better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to a very special edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit-Down. That's right, folks. You're probably saying, Seaman, why in the world are you talking about Pennywise the Clown? Well, about a week and a half ago, Pennywise's newest version of his movie uh, dropped on DVD, and I said, this gives me a great opportunity to start a section of the channel that I've been waiting to do. And that section, of course, is the retro review section. There are tons of movies that happened that I love all before the channel. And I said, you know what? I want to talk about those movies. You guys know how much I love talking about movies with you. And why should I, you know, rob you guys of the opportunity to listen to me talk about some of my favorites? So right here in the retro review section, that's what we're going to do. So you know the deal. Pull up a chair. Take a seat. Tonight, I am talking it. Um, for those who are unaware, you know, if somehow you hit in a rock since the fall, and you don't know what this movie is about, uh, it is the story that chronicles our seven uh, children, main characters, uh, who live in Derry, Maine, who stumble across an evil entity um, that they refer to as it. But he refers to himself as Pennywise, the dancing clown. And every 27 years, Pennywise pops up to steal some kids and feed off of their fear. Um, and that's what this movie is about. And at the heart, this movie is not just about a scary clown, but really about... It's a tale of growing up in the face of an absolutely horrific, horrific thing happening in the town of Derry for these kids. Um, it is directed by Andy Muschietti, written by Chase Palmer, Gary Dauberman, and the great Carrie Fukunaga. Um, man, they, I mean, you guys already know. If you've seen my top 10 list from 2017, it came in at number three. I loved this movie. I am a diehard Stephen King fan, and I have very high expectations. Um, so much of his material is just, like, you read it, and it's just like, oh, man, I want to see that on the big screen. And there's no author who's had more movies or more of his writing turned into movies than Stephen King. And a lot of times it's hard to meet what King can do with his writing ability, because he is a master. Um, but what they did with this film, oh man, is it so, so, so good. Uh, but you know how I roll, guys. I'm not going to start with the good. There's lots of good, there's lots of great to talk about. But first off, we're going to start with the bad We'll end with the good so you guys have a good taste in your mouth. And if somehow you didn't see this movie, hopefully I entice you to want to go see it. And for me, there's one major issue with the movie. Um, you know, like I said, it chronicles, you know, the story of seven kids. And each kid in the story has a very major role. Uh, they each bring something different to the table. And those different things, when they're all together, that forms a group that's formidable to go head to head with Pennywise. A problem I have with this movie, right? And it does some things, it, does, it adapts the material so well, but it does do some things that are different, right? This movie takes place in the 80s, not the 50s. Um, you know, they, they tweak some things, and almost everything they tweak works. Uh, the original book, if you're familiar with it, bounces back and forth between them being adults, which is where it starts, and flashbacks of them as kids the first time they run into Pennywise. The original TV movie that was made with Tim Curry does the same thing. It bounces back and forth. They opted to separate the kid's story and tell that first, and then go and tell the adult story in Chapter 2, which is due out in a couple of years. Very looking forward to that for sure. And all those things work, but there's one thing that they've changed that does not work at all for me. And it, it's just, it's one of those things that makes you go, why did you do that? Um, Mike Hanlon is the lone black kid in this group. Um, and he is from Derry. He, you know, he considers himself an outsider, and his grandfather has told him many a times, there's something evil in Derry. And in the book, Mike is the historian of the group. He's the one that goes to the library, knowing all of the horrors that he knows that have happened in this town, and he's the one that puts together that every 27 years kids go missing, that this town has a higher death rate than, almost by double, than any other town in America. 
especially even worse when it comes to kids. He's the one that figures all of that out. And in this movie, they strip that away from him. That is the major, major functioning part of Mike's character. And they strip that away from him and they add it on to Ben. Um, and Ben, you know, and Ben's great. And the kid, you know, Jeremy Ray Taylor, who plays Ben, does a fantastic job. Um, and taking this, if you didn't know it, what, you know, if you didn't know any of that, you, you, know, you wouldn't know any better. And you'd say, oh man, Ben's so good. But they make Ben the historian. And the problem with that for me, especially in the world where there's so much whitewashing still happening in, in Hollywood, right? Where, you know, ethnic characters are being played by, you know, white character, you know, white, white people. Um, you know, here's the most interest, the most critical character in this movie is Mike because Mike figures it all out and they put that on Ben and basically leave Mike as the kid who has a gun. Um, he works with his grandfather, um, with, you know, the sheep herd, you know, and when they have to put the sheep down, they use these kind of air pressurized guns to take the sheep out. And that plays, that p tool plays into the movie. And that's pretty much all Mike brings to the group. And that's an absolute shame, um, because it just feels like they're hitting major stereotypes, right? The black kid is the kid who's going to bring the gun to the group. You know, the lone weapon that they really have that's not things they find when they're trying to fight Pennywise is brought to the group with Mike. And that's a shame, because Mike is, like I said, in the book, he's the, one of the most critical characters, because he's the one that puts it all together. He's the one that brings everybody back to Derry come Chapter 2. And I don't know if that's going to happen now, because they, they took that away from him, and I was extremely disappointed with that. Uh, it, was, it was just a... It, there was no reason to alter that piece of material, and I wish they would have stuck with like they did, I mean, they stick with everything when it comes to the characters. They're so spot on. I don't understand why they took that away from Mike. And it's super disappointing um, to just take a character who's super important and kind of just turn him into the stereotype outcast kid. Um, that was super disappointing for me. Um, but other than that, everything else in this movie is fantastic. Uh, and it all starts with surpassing the expectations of the movie. Um, like I said, there's a huge following for King fans, uh, of King fans, rather. And, the, you know, when these movies come out, we always have super high expectations, and they very seldomly meet those expectations. And this movie didn't just meet them, it surpassed it. And by surpassing those expectations, I mean, that is a fantastic achievement, something that everyone involved in this film should be very proud of. Um, and it all starts for me with the kids. Um, you'd think like, oh yeah, it's definitely all about Bill Skarsgård because he plays the clown. And you know, cause this is a movie about a terrifying clown. Well, no, that's not true. This is a movie about growing up. You know, it's, it's the coming of age story of these seven kids because they are facing very tragic circumstances, very horrifying circumstances. And how they deal with that throughout the movie is the crux of everything. And these seven kids nail it man they knock this movie out of the park the, the whole reason this movie works as fantastic as bill skarsgård is if you don't have this group of kids i don't know if this movie is as good as it is um jaden lieberher who plays bill uh he's kind of our centerpiece right now this is a non-spoiler review for the most part i'm gonna have some mild spoilers being that the movie's been out for so long i want to hit some of my favorite parts um so jaden lieberher plays bill denbrow who is kind of our First main character we meet. His little brother, Georgie, uh, gets taken by Pennywise right at the beginning of the movie. Uh, this is one of those scenes that could have been a huge detriment, right? In movies, we always have this walking on eggshells when it comes to violence in children. Uh, it's kind of looked down upon when you kill kids in movies. It doesn't happen very often. Um, and it happens in the first five minutes of this movie. And it happens in a fairly graphic way. Um... You know, in the book, one of the things that they tweak is, you know, they find Georgie's body missing an arm in the book. And in this movie, they don't find the body, but he sure is missing an arm. Uh, when he runs into Pennywise in the storm grate at the beginning of the movie, uh, he's trying to get his boat that floated into the, you know, into the sewers. And Pennywise grabs it, and very much how I introduced myself to you guys is how Pennywise interacts with Georgie. And when Georgie finally goes in to take the take the boat back 
Pennywise opens his mouth, all sorts of crazy teeth come out, latches onto the arm, and rips it off. But the reason it works is because Andy Muschietti does such a great job of establishing it in a very artistic and very non-graphic... Well, I mean, it is graphic, but it's not grotesque. That's how we'll say it. Uh, basically what happens is you see the bite start to happen, and then the camera cuts, and by the time the camera cuts, the arm's already been taken off. Georgie's crawling, blood shooting out of the side, into the water of the rain that's running into the sewer drain, and then he gets pulled in. Um, and that's a scene that could have caused huge problems right from the get-go with this movie. But it works, because Andy Muschietti does it in such an artistic fashion, and non-grotesque fashion. That's the other thing. It's a rated R movie, and most of that is for terror and language. But they never over go over the top with gore, because we're, we're dealing with kids, and that works so well in the movie. And Bill Denbrow is Georgie's older brother, played by Jaden, Jaden Lieberher, as I said. And he does a fantastic job, right? Um, his big characteristic is he ultimately becomes the leader of the Losers Club. That's what the seven call themselves. Um, you know, he becomes the leader by the end of the movie. Uh, but the one thing that he does have is he has a stutter. And that's one of those things that can be real tricky in movies. It can come off kind of, eh, if it's not done right. And it comes off so natural. And that's because Jaden does such a fantastic job acting. All of these kids do. It's the one thing that when you watch this movie, you realize these are not just kids reciting lines. These are kids who are legit actors. They all do such a great job. And it starts with Jaden Lieberher, man. Uh, he carries this group, and you feel his pain so much. I mean... The, the way he misses Georgie and the way that affects him as a person uh, is just expressed in a way that you immediately can feel all of it. Uh, and like I said, mild spoilers. At the end, as we're coming toward the climax of the movie, they're debating whether or not to go into this, you know, decrepit haunted house where they know Pennywise is. And, you know, they haven't found Georgie's body. And Georgie is the fear manifestation that Pennywise continually uses with Bill. And they go in, and right before they go in, everyone's getting cold feet. And, you know, Bill looks at them all in the eye and he goes, Look, it is easier for me to walk into this house than it is to walk into my own. Because every time I walk into my house, I know Georgie's missing and it's not right. Oh, man. I mean, the delivery of that line, you know, which plays into uh, Richie Tozier, who's played by Finn Wolfhard, the comedic character in the group he says holy shit he didn't stutter once and that's the it's one of those moments man where everything that bill is working towards lands and you just feel like Phew, there he is he's the leader um and he's so good man you just like i said you feel everything that he's going through um richie tozier one of ben's best friends played by finn wolfhard um, is the wise ass of the group. Uh, and I was nervous for Finn because we all know Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things. And his character is the exact opposite of that in Stranger Things. He's the one who is serious and down in the dumps because his best friend is the one that gets taken. He's very serious and he plays the role so well. I wasn't sure if he could pull Richie off because I hadn't seen him do comedy. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, I've always said if you're going to have a good horror movie, you have to be able to cut the tension. Uh, a movie that just runs tension-filled all the way through, it, it's hard. You start to feel uncomfortable. And as terrifying as this movie is, you never feel uncomfortable because they do such a good job of cutting the tension, and a lot of that stems from Richie. Um, Richie is just the fast-talking, wise-ass of the group, and everything that pretty much comes out of Finn Wolfhard's mouth is absolutely hysterical. Um, you know, uh, literally, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but he has... Almost all of the best lines come from him, and he executes it so, so, so well. I absolutely love Finn Wolfhard. Huge, huge props to him to pull off Richie Tozier the way he does. Um, the third of the kids, who I just absolutely love, is uh, Beverly Marsh, who's played by Sophia Lillis. Um, uh, very much like Bill, the way you can feel Bill's sorrow and the torment that he's going through. Uh, Beverly does the same thing. And Sophia Lillis is just fantastic. She's also the most adult of all of the kids in the group. Um, she has the most adult real-life problems outside of Bill dealing with the loss of Georgie. Um, it's never really said directly, but they do a very good job of making you feel what's going on with her at home. Um, she, you know, she's being abused by her father. 
Um, and they do a very good job. You know, it's a touchy subject. You know, it's a touchy thing. It's just one of those things, if you don't play it right, your whole movie could fall apart. And the way they handle that whole situation, you never see the line be crossed, really. But it's in a way where you know what's going on. And that real-life fear that she has to deal with every day when she goes home uh, just sets up for what her character is. And Lily, uh, Sophia Lillis just expresses that so well. And a lot of it is in her eyes. Her eyes are... So much of her acting comes through her eyes in this movie. Uh, and it's just... It's brilliant, you know? And she... Because of that, I mean, let alone she also deals with, you know, the fact that, like, people at school call her a slut, even though she's not. Um, you know, she's got the most adult problems, I would say. Uh, and the way she deals with them, and you same very much like Bill, you can feel everything she's going through. And that's just a credit to how good Sophia Lewis is in the movie. Um, then there's Ben Hanscom, who's played by Jeremy Ray Taylor. Um, like I said, he's the one who steals, not that it's Jeremy Ray Taylor's fault, but he takes the historian perspective away from Mike, and it's bestowed on him. And the issue I have with that is Ben is the new kid. He's the kid who's just arrived in Derry, who's been there for like a little bit, and it plays well into the character and the fact that he didn't have any friends, so he would go to the library. The way they handle the change works. Um, I just wish they didn't do it. Um, but Jeremy Ray Taylor does such a great job, um... You know, he, he just, same thing. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's almost the most human, right? Like, every time he's on screen, you're just like, you kind of smile a little bit because you feel for him. He's the, he's the fat kid, you know? And he, he plays that kid in a way that's just so lovable that everything about him, you just go, oh, man, he makes you smile a lot in the movie, right? I mean, he's got, you know, he has a very interesting, he's a very interesting fan of a certain music group. Uh, that plays very well. He also has a big crush on Beverly that plays into this kind of love triangle thing. Um, Beverly and Bill have a brief history because in a play when they were younger, they kissed. Um, and it's a very interesting dynamic between the three of them. Um, but all of it works really well because the kids pull it off so well. Uh, so props to Jeremy Ray Taylor. You know, he's not a huge character, not as big as the other three, um, but he's very, very good. Uh, Jack Dylan Grazer, who plays Eddie Kasbrack, uh, he's my fourth favorite. After, the, you know, Bill... Bev and Richie, um, Eddie is fantastic. Eddie is a hypochondriac. Um, he is afraid of every single thing you could think of when it comes to sickness. Um, you know, they're messing around in the sewers, and he's like, nah, I'm not going in there. That's gray water, man. And they're like, what's gray water? Gray water is basically like piss and shit. I'm not walking around in that. And that stems from how his mother raised him, um, because she never wanted him to leave home. And Jack Dylan Grazer plays that role so well. Um, his biggest fear is manifested in that of a leper, um, which is disgusting and terrifying when it's chasing him. But everything that Jack Dylan Grazer does with Eddie is just brilliant. Um, he plays that character so well. I mean, he's, you know, he talks a mile a minute sometimes because of all of the things he knows because he's afraid of basically every sickness known to mankind. Um, but he, you know, Jack Dylan Grazer does such a great job. He pops on screen so much and you absolutely fall in love with Eddie very quickly. Um, and on a quick side note, Eddie has one of the most interesting scenes for me in the movie. Uh, I saw Bill Skarsgård interviewed, and, you know, they asked him, what was it like working with kids? And he goes, well, you get one of two things. You either get kids who deliver lines, or you get kids who are real-life actors. And the first time, they kept them separated for about a month before they finally introduced Bill to the group in costume. And the first scene that he actually did with them in person uh, he takes Eddie and throws him up against the wall, and he's screaming and spitting and slobbering all over him, and Eddie's a hysteric mess. And Skarsgård said that in the back of his head, he was like, oh my god, I am traumatizing this kid right now. And when they called cut, he you know puts Jack down, and he goes, oh my god, Jack, I'm so sorry, man. Like, are you okay? Like, I didn't mean to scare you that much. And Jack looks at him and goes, I love what you're doing with the character. Let's keep building on that. And that's when Jack realized that he was working with real actors. And let me tell you, these kids are definitely real actors. They are amazing. And Jack Dylan Grazer is certainly one of the tops in that group. Which brings us to our second to last uh, person who we've talked a little bit about already. That's Mike Hanlon, uh, played by Chosen Jacobs. And, uh, you know, they don't give him a ton to do. Like I said, they stripped away the one key element to his character. Um, but when he's on screen, he's very good. Um, you know, and he just works so well within the group. I just wish they would have had more to give Chosen to do because the little bit he has, he executes very well. Um, and then finally, our last uh, character is Stanley Uris, played by Wyatt Olaf. 
um, who is the anxiety-driven character in the group. Uh, he is afraid of pretty much everything. Um, and he is great at that, man. Every time he's on screen and he has something to do, you start shaking because he's shaking in pure fear. Uh, and the anxiety and the things that he has going through plays so well on screen. Uh, he does a really, really, really great job. Um, the one thing that I've learned now that it's on DVD and having access to deleted scenes, Stanley probably would have stood out a little bit more had they played a scene that they deleted. And it's one I wish they would have kept um, because it's a very, very crucial element to the story. And it's the way the adults handle things in Derry. Right? These kids go missing and the adults don't really seem to do much. And it all plays into the mythos of Pennywise and the town of Derry. And you get that sense that all of the adults are kind of grotesque. Uh, anywhere in the th movie, when you run into parents or different adults, they all kind of seem a little off and they're all kind of disgusting. Um, you see that with the pharmacist. You see that with Eddie's mom. Uh, you see that a little bit with Bill's dad. Um, you s definitely see that with the bully's dad, uh, Henry Bowers, his father. Um, but you see they're all a little off. And you pick up on that, but you don't really get the full sense of how off these parents and adults are. Uh, and this deleted scene that's on the DVD features Stanley front and center at his bat mitzvah. And after finishing his prayer, he addresses the congregation. And in doing so, um, it's, and it's why I wish this scene was in the movie. You know, he basically says, like, what I've learned is that being, you know, a kid in this town means you have to look out for yourself because the adults don't do it. Um, and I mean, it's a much more eloquent speech than that. Um, and if you get a chance to grab the DVD, rent it from Redbox or buy it yourselves, definitely check it out because I think it's a scene... That could have paid off and made Stanley even that much better of a character. But, even without that scene in the theatrical version, Wyatt Olaf is excellent. Um, so that's our main seven. But there's one other kid in the movie um, that's not Georgie. Uh, Georgie's on screen only for a little bit. Um, and Georgie is played by Jackson Robert Scott. And he does a great job. Every time he is on screen, um, you know, Georgie is very good very limited. Um, but the one other main kid character in the movie is Henry Bowers, played by Nicholas Hamilton. And he is the bully. And I'm not even going to say quintessential bully, because he is a psychopath bully. Um, and it's one of those things that was kind of hit decently in the original movie. But in the book, I mean, he's like off the charts crazy. And he is that, the you know, Nicholas Hamilton plays that so well, right? Like, as scary as the clown is, Henry Bowers is just as scary, just in a different, psychotic kind of way. Uh, and, especially in a world where bullying is such a big deal, um, the movie kind of addresses it in a very, very violent, aggressive way. But also one that, you know, points out that, like, bullying is a big deal, and it affects these kids a lot. Um, and they run into Henry a bunch of times, and he has one scene that, again, and it's the way Muschietti does it. I mean, he carves, he goes to carve his name into Ben's stomach. Um, and that happens in the book. Uh, it even happens in the, the TV movie. You don't see it. It happens off screen. But Henry has a, or Ben has an H scar on his stomach from Henry trying to do that. And this happens in the movie, and it's one of the most cringeworthy moments. Um, but, again, it's handled in a way that's not grotesque. Uh, a lot of the cutting actually doesn't happen on screen, and then you see it, and you just... It all plays into who Henry is. Now, the one thing about Henry, um, like I said, Nicholas Hamilton plays the character off the charts crazy, and it works so well. Um, but there's something that happens. I won't spoil it. But how his character is handled toward the end of the movie sets up for something interesting come chapter two, because Henry has a role to play in the, uh, in the book in the original movie. And I'll be very interested how that's handled, or if it's handled, come chapter two. And depending on how it's handled, could change my way on how I feel they handle the character. But, uh, Nicholas Hamilton does a great job. So, like I said, the kids in this movie, they're all legit actors and they bring their A-game. Which brings us to Bill Skarsgård, who is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Um, the thing with Tim Curry that made his character so iconic is he kind of played a goofy, like, ha ha, I'm a clown. And then when you got in close, he took you. 
And Bill Skarsgård does that with Georgie to kind of lure Georgie in because Georgie's super young. But he doesn't do that with the other kids. He just goes straight in for their fears and he harps on them and delivers the, their fears in ways that terrify these kids to produce the fear he needs. And Bill does such an amazing job. I mean, he for me, he elevated the character to it of it or Pennywise to something I didn't even know was possible. Um, the movie itself doesn't get me jumping too much. There's maybe one or two scenes, you know, that I, I jumped when I was in the theater. But what you're watching on screen is horrifying, terrifying stuff. And all of that stems from how good Bill Skarsgård is as this clown. Um, you know, he he is going to be the guy that gives lots of kids nightmares and makes kids hate clowns. Uh, and he's fantastic. Uh, I mean, the accent and the voice that he uses is brilliant. Um, his facial expressions, he does this thing with his lip that kind of comes down into a point when he smiles. And it's one of those things, like, you can see it being prosthetics, but it's actually Bill Skarsgård. It's something he figured out he could do when he was a kid. And that played so well into the to the character. And another thing when he was being interviewed that I saw him um, talk about was when he was going to audition for the role, uh, he didn't dress up in clown makeup because he thought it would be cliche and thought it would hurt, you know, hinder him from getting the job. And he came in and he was like one of the only people who didn't dress up as a clown. And he did a really, really good job. So when they called him back, they're like, yeah, but when you come back in, could you could you dress up like the clown and give us like the full thing? And he had to park a couple blocks away and is walking in Hollywood up to go do his second audition in clown makeup, talking to himself in the car and on the street as this clown. And he, you know, he said, uh, people probably thought I was crazy and everything from day one, when back then when he was doing that stuff, everything that he does with this character is just all fantastic. I mean, he's horror. Like I said, he's horrifying. He's terrifying. Um, but everything Bill Skarsgård does just elevated the character to places I didn't know he could be. And I'm very, very excited for what he can do come Chapter 2. Because uh, as I said, Pennywise isn't just a clown. Pennywise is, takes he takes the form of a clown more often than not. Um, but there's a lot more to his character that they don't dive into in this movie. And I so hope that they dive into come Chapter 2 because Bill Skarsgård... Uh, he really puts his acting on display in this movie. And I think he could do some wonderful things come chapter two. So that's all the acting, right? All the big acting stuff comes right there. You know, I talked about the parents and the adults already. So we've covered all the actual human people elements of this movie. And that's what makes it so great. The cast drives this whole movie behind the leadership of Andy Muschietti and the writing of, you know, Carrie Fukunaga and the other writers. Um, and all of that is perfect. But there is other things that work so well in this movie. One of the things that, you know, you got to hit on is the score. Uh, so much, you know, in, especially in horror movies, harps and lives and thrives and depends on the score of the movie and what the music can do to a person emotionally. And the score in this movie is fantastic, man. It continually puts you on the edge of your seat and it plays into the suspense building that the writing and the directing and the acting does, uh, which is one of the other things that's so great about this movie. Um, like I said, it's not always, I, I don't know if I'd classify it as super scary. Like, what's happening on screen is terrifying. But I never felt scared in the theater. But man, did I feel the suspense, because the suspense building in this movie is just done so well. Um, you know, you're constantly on the edge of your seat. You're constantly like, oh man, what's going to happen? And so much of that comes from the directing, the writing, the acting, and the score just underlies all of that so well. Um, and then the fact that this movie is not just... It's not just a good horror movie or a great horror movie. Which is usually how people talk about horror films. Uh, so often when you talk about a horror film, you kind of separate it from everything else. right? It's left off of the Oscars. It's even left off of... Typically it's left off of even the Golden Globes and the SAGs. Um, but this movie is structured and put together so well that it is just an excellent movie start to finish. Um, you know, you remove the clown element and you still could make this movie work and it would be, you know, this coming of age story of this group of kids. And that's how good the movie is, you know, like it's not all about the horror. It's about everything that you're, you're living through with this group. And it's just such a well-structured movie that it's not just a good horror movie. It's not just a great horror movie. It is a great movie, period, end of sentence. And that is super impressive to do, especially in this genre. Um, because so often, 
that doesn't work. Um, and they just, the way the movie is structured is so well, it's so impressive what they pulled off, that it is. It deserved to be in my top three this year. Um, and one of the other things that I love about this movie is um, is uh, Richie's fear, right? Like each kid, that they pick off each kid individually before they go after the whole group. So each kid has its own personal experience with the clown that's horrifying. And Richie's fear is clowns straight up. And he ends up in a room filled with clowns at one point. And if you look closely, one of the clowns in the room is modeled exactly after Tim Curry. And I loved that. Um, you had to find some way to kind of tip your hat to the original because Tim Curry's performance was so iconic. And they stick a clown in there, this kind of clown doll that looks exactly like Tim Curry's version of Pennywise. I was so glad that was in there and I absolutely loved seeing it. Um, and that's the other thing that I also love about this movie is it, it portrays these kids as individuals and their individual characters come through so well because of the writing, the acting, and the directing. Um, you know, I mean, Muschietti get, just gets the most out of all of these kids, but by targeting each one individually first before going after the whole group, you really get a full sense of who they are as individuals and what being an individual means to them as kids kind of in this coming of tale age and that's what's so impressive about it you know it kind of feels like a horror version of goonies um which is another thing that plays so well i know i mentioned earlier that they had tweaked it from being in the 50s where you know kids horrors were you know the things the kids were scared of were like the wolf man and frankenstein and you know dracula the classic horror characters and updating it to the 80s worked so well because it, it it's more relatable to people now uh than something that would be you know, to the 50s, you know, because this was, I think King wrote this in the 70s, maybe, 70s, 80s, but so, like, that worked for the book, but to update it to the 80s worked so well, and they nailed the time period so well, I mean, it feels like an 80s movie, uh, Richie even makes a, uh, a Molly Ringwald comment at one point, referring to Beverly, and, like, all that stuff just plays, these characters feel so well, and it's that, it's that group experience that you get with Stranger Things, that you get with Goonies, um, it all works and plays so well. Um, you know, I love the updating to the 80s. And, I mean, that's... You know, like I said, the individuality um, of these characters is the other driving force of this movie. Because um, it just portrays them so well as individuals and what being an individual means to each kid. So that's it. That's I think I've, I've exhausted myself talking about this movie. Um, not in a bad way, but I definitely wanted to get it all out there because there was so much good stuff packed into this. Such an epically good job um, from everybody. You know, the cast, the crew, the directing, the writing. Across the board, this movie is a slam dunk. Um, if you haven't seen it, please, I urge you, go pick it up at Redbox. If you're a movie collector fan like I am, go buy the movie. It's so worth it because it's so good. Um, but that's all I've got to say. So now I want to know what you got to say. Hit those comments below. Let me know what you thought of the movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it scary? If it wasn't scary, was it suspenseful? How did you feel watching the movie? Um, how much did you love the kids? Who was your favorite character? How good was Bill Skarsgård? Hit all of those you know, points. Let me know what you thought down below. Hit those comments. Um, <laughs> as always, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Hit that thumbs up. I love seeing those. Um, and of course, if you haven't seen the movie, let me know if I have successfully enticed you to want to watch it. I hope I have, because it's totally, totally worth it. Uh, and of course, last but not least, if you're not part of the squad already, please hit that subscribe button, and then hit the little bell next to it so you get an alert every time I make a new video. So, for the Seaman's Cinema Sit-Down, I am the Seaman, and I am signing off. Good night, everybody.